The pandemic was a stress test for many of us, but here's one financial instrument that can help. OctaFX. OctaFX is a reliable global trading platform with over seven years of experience. It helps Forex traders make the most profitable and efficient trading decisions. Today, they have more than 3.5 million open trading accounts and 100 countries covered. If you're new to trading, OctaFX provides a free Forex basic course, free webinars, and also sends weekly and monthly reports so that you're always aware of market news. Download the OctaFX trading app from the description and get $5,000 in your demo account just for practice. You can practice until you feel ready to switch to a real account. Check the caption to find out more and use your promo code WUSI100 to double your first-time deposits for more efficient trading. Hello, family, and welcome to another week of Ideas That Matter on the VT Podcast. This week, I'm going to jump straight in and talk to you about Genesis. Genesis, the beginning of things. So I was thinking about this, right? The beginning of things. This is the products that shape our lives every single day, but we don't quite consider where it is that they actually come from. So what I thought I'd do is pick like two random culinary examples and just have a quick conversation with you about where they come from. Why? Because this is ideas that matter. We like sharing information that is freely available, but not ubiquitously distributed, so that you get new thoughts, new concepts, and new ways of seeing old things. So here's the first question. Where does tomato sauce come from? Or as the Americans would call it, ketchup. The first person to write about what may have been a tomato sauce was a fellow called Bernardo Sehagun, who was a Franciscan friar from the Kingdom of Spain. He later moved, by the way, to what became known as New Spain. He mentioned and prepared a sauce that was offered for sale in the markets of Ternohiclen. Today, it's called Mexico City. See, the first Italian cookbook to include tomato sauce, Lo Scalo alla Mordena, the modern steward, was written by an Italian chef, Antonio Latini, who published in two volumes in 1692 and 1694. The use of this particular tomato sauce appeared with pasta for the first time in 1790 in the Italian cookbook La Apaccio Mordeno, written by the Roman chef Francisco Leonardi. Why am I telling you this? Well, because it's been widely debated about whether or not tomato sauce or ketchup is actually a part of a dish or a condiment. How should it really be served? The purists say the tomato sauce should be part of a dish, that it's not an addition to. You don't put it on a side plate and dip your French fries, as the Americans would say, on it. It should be a part of the actual meal. But those of us in modern and contemporary times, as I do, I have tomato sauce with everything. Side note, the other day I'm at this top tier restaurant in Johannesburg, South Africa. I order, as I like to, a sirloin steak, medium well, with a side of sweet potatoes. And then I asked for tomato sauce. I'm told that the chef was really offended that I ate his steak with tomato sauce. He felt that I was diluting the flavor. I felt I was giving it the flavor he'd failed to insert in the first place. And by the way, as a paying customer, as they always say, the customer ain't always right, but the customer is king. Now, I asked about the genesis and where things come from. There is widely debated today in the world of culinary Is tomato sauce an in-dish or condiment? The point about it is, is it material which of these it is, or is it simply how we enjoy it? That is the genesis of tomato sauce. Let me give you one more. Sliced bread. You ever heard the expression, the greatest thing since sliced bread? I thought to myself, where does that come from? Why does an invention have to be the greatest thing since sliced bread? Are you trying to tell me that unsliced bread was such a human inconvenience that slicing it was a major invention? 
And by the way, who invented this popular food? Sliced bread. Bread is one of the oldest prepared fruits. I don't know if you know that. There is evidence human beings were whipping up crude form of the stuff some 30,000 years ago. Sliced bread, however, has been around for just less than a century. Produced on July the 6th, 1928, in Chilicote, Missouri, using a machine invented by a fellow called Otto Rowida, who was an Iowa-born, Missouri-based jeweler. So I immediately started thinking to myself, what was a jeweler doing experimenting with bread? See, Rowida's quest was to make sliced bread a reality, but it didn't come without its challenges. So why did he even have this quest in the first place? In 1917, a fire destroyed his prototype and blueprints, and he also faced skepticism from bakers who thought factory-sliced loaves would quickly go stale and fall apart. See, any time you want to do something new, shift the way people do things, innovate the way things are done. And I want you to remember this and listen to this intently. The most stark criticism will always come for the experts of that field. Why is that? Why would Buzz Aldrin tell Elon Musk that he shouldn't be doing SpaceX and trying to commercialize it? The reason is quite simple. Experts are experts in the old thing. They're so good at it, so invested in it, that they can't see it for what it can be. Because in their minds, what it is, is the best form of what it's capable of being. So anytime you want to innovate, shift, and do things, be very careful of the expert opinion of experts. Nevertheless, 1928, Rowetta rebuilt that power-driven, multi-bladed bread slicer. It was put into service in his friend Frank Benj Colletole Baking Company, and it worked a charm. Today, you enjoy sliced bread because of the vision, foresight, and relentless pursuit of Mr. Rowetta in 1928. Our partner in today's episode is OctaFX, a global trading platform. Taking risks is a part of life, but understanding risk is what can lead to success. That's why OctaFX believes you should know the basics of risk management. Because there's a lot of misinformation out there, people need to be guided by reliable sources. They need to understand who they can trust. To combat this, OctaFX consistently conducts webinars, sends letters with important news, reports, and also offers a free course. By downloading the OctaFX trading app, you can also open a demo account and get $5,000 to practice to understand which strategy suits you and how you feel about the market. And you can practice until you're sure you can move on to a real account. Check out the caption to learn more. And now back to Vusi's podcast, Ideas That Matter. So here's what I'd like you to consider, just based on this episode. Before you consider anything sacrosanct, consider the genesis of that thing. Sometimes where things started is not where things were destined to be. Which then brings me to the second point. The beginning of things is not necessarily aligned to the evolution of those things. One of my own core belief systems is that as a generation, our task is to disappoint or be disappointed by our heroes. It's to look at the things that our heroes have done and take them as a given, assume we can do better, be disappointed in their efforts, and push even beyond the boundaries of what they thought was possible. Third, and finally, and this is quite the conspiratorial thought. Who decides how the story of the beginning of things is told? If we agree that history is a perspective and all perspectives are human, then we must agree that by their very design, perspectives, ergo history, is bias. So sometimes the way we are taught about the genesis of things is not necessarily its true genesis. It's the genesis that suits the narrative of the day. In your own space, 
what are the things that are taken as given? When I started working as a professional public speaker, I was told that I had to have one keynote that I delivered, wrote with the same content, same jokes every single time. And I thought to myself, but that's redundant. Why would different clients pay me to hear the same message? I want to develop a system, model, and methodology that allows me to deliver my content the way I want to deliver my content. It allows me to adjust to the questions, needs, and wants of each and every customer. It allows me to be agile and responsive. I'm willing to invest in it, but that's my process. One of the reasons I'm now in the top 12 speakers in the world is quite simply because that's been my process. Every client has a unique set of requirements, and I tailor my conversation to those requirements of that client. When I first started doing this, I have to tell you, it was quite the hullabaloo in the industry. The other speakers were very upset with me, very upset with me. But I recognized that the genesis of things was not necessarily aligned to the evolution of those things. To the entrepreneurs watching this question, there is a massive conversation to be had about the genesis of venture capital and how it's being applied in many of the developing nations and economies in the world. But one thing stands true, and that's simply ask yourself this question. What is the genesis of the things that affect your life every day? Is that the true story or the story that suits the narrative of the day? And how do you shift and push beyond the bounds of what is believed to be possible? That, my dear friends, that's our podcast for this week. Coming in hot and heavy from our studios in Johannesburg, South Africa. I want to say thank you so much to listening to this. Please remember to send us your comments, your thoughts. Subscribe to this if you'd like to. Please subscribe. We, we need subscribers. They're very important for the rating of the podcast. Please subscribe. And finally, if you can send voice notes that give us a sense of what you're enjoying and what you'd like to hear, we'd love to hear from you. From me, Vusi Tembegwayo, and the team here at Sound & Sounds. Have an amazing week. Jumbo. Hey, Vusi, this is Monique. I'm Cameroonian, but i um, currently in Abuja, Nigeria, and I've been working in Nigeria since um, last year. It was an amazing, it was another amazing episode uh, on the podcast. I loved everything about the podcast. I learned a lot. I mean, I personally discovered you last year and I took a whole week and I watched every video on YouTube. I've learned so much. I implemented um, all the advice and I've seen tremendous results. I cannot wait for the next episode of the podcast. Um, I just want to say thank you for believing in the continent. Thank you for using social media positively. Thank you for not giving up on the continent. Thank you for being uh, a perfect example, in my opinion, of how we should think of the continent and how much we should believe in our continent against all odds. Um, just keep doing what you're doing and I'm rooting for you. This podcast was proudly brought to you by My Growth Fund in partnership with Sound & Sounds Media. To have your podcast recorded, send an email to info at soundandsounds.co.za. That's I-N-F-O at S-O-U-N-D-A-N-D-S-O-U-N-D-S dot C-O dot Z-A.